Hey there, good afternoon. This is a huge, huge crowd. I'm glad you guys stayed until near the end. Uh, my name is Eric Lee. Uh, I happen to be one of the co-founders of LinkedIn. And uh, today, I'm not going to give you a pitch about my project called Hub, at least not directly. Uh, but I'm going to talk instead about um, how we as a community are going to mainstream crypto, because it's really important that we do that. Every technology revolution needs to get to the mainstream. And uh, so I want to share some thoughts about that. So as I said, uh, I was one of the co-founders behind LinkedIn. Uh, for those of you who don't know LinkedIn, uh, it's the world's most uh, successful professional network. Uh, 500 million users, uh, your profiles are on it. Uh, there probably shouldn't be anybody in this room with uh, so many people here uh, without an account. So uh, great profiles. Uh, we learned a lot about social networking and uh, using platforms to help people connect with one another. However, there are some problems after 15, 16 years of a platform. One of them happens to be uh, fake information. You've heard a lot about this on uh, platforms like Facebook, fake news, fake ads, fake content. Uh, unfortunately, also on LinkedIn, there are fake uh, profiles. It's especially important on uh, a platform like LinkedIn because uh, people make uh, some serious decisions based on that information. So if you've lied about your uh, academic institution or you've lied about your job and people believe you, they end up hiring you maybe when uh, they shouldn't. Uh, there's also the incidence of uh, inappropriate communication. All those messages that you get from recruiters, uh, from people reaching out to you, uh, maybe you know when they shouldn't without an appropriate opportunity uh, for you. So those are some of the problems that exist today on LinkedIn, but uh, not only on LinkedIn, but uh, social networks uh, at large as well. So uh, this is one of my favorite slides in the presentation. It shows a flaming Bitcoin. And uh, you might ask, well, why is the Bitcoin uh, flaming? Uh, well, we all know that uh, Bitcoin has reached uh, kind of a low uh, this week. So it's actually not flaming up, but flaming downwards. And um, so why is this important, right? Um, I think people are trying to understand what is the intrinsic value of these cryptocurrencies. And, uh, you know, whereas with uh, gold, uh, and other kinds of real assets, there's kind of an intrinsic value. Uh, I would argue that with cryptocurrencies, uh, there has yet to be an establishment of what the intrinsic value is. So you see a lot of fluctuations uh, with all of the cryptocurrencies uh, that are, are out there t today. And in the long run, what we have to do is we have to take uh, any of these cryptocurrencies, be they Bitcoin or Ether, or any of the other altcoins, and uh, really establish some kind of relationship between the token value and the intrinsic value that exists uh, as represented by you know, things that people uh, care about. And so that's the path uh, to the mainstream that we need to uh, you know, get to. So uh, I thought I'd spend a couple of slides to, to kind of talk about what makes blockchain uh, special, right? There, there's a lot of hype around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, various currencies, uh, but there's a really interesting uh, underlying technology. I'm preaching to the choir right now, so you all know about Bitchain, or I mean block, blockchain, sorry. Uh, so for me, uh, it is the fact that uh, blockchain is uh, representing the internet of value. So this term uh, in case you don't know, came from a guy named uh, Ton, uh, Don Tapscott, who several years ago uh, presented at the World Economic Forum. And he talked about how we currently live in the world of the internet of information. And we're moving, blockchain allows us to move to the internet of value. And that's fundamentally what makes blockchain so special, right? Because you can now store things that are of value on the blockchain. So one of the first applications of value is cryptocurrency. Those are things of value. And um, 
uh, they can be represented in a, in a safe and secure way on the blockchain. But there are other things of value that you can also store on blockchain, uh, things that are besides currency. And, and that's what I argue becomes uh, even more interesting for many kinds of different blockchain applications that will, that will come. Uh, so um, how many of you were here in 1943? Excellent, excellent. So uh, in 1943, uh, the first computers came. Uh, this is a picture of uh, ENIAC. It filled a whole room and it required special people called computers to operate. Uh, and uh, last year we had uh, the iPhone 10, which is uh, about 40 million times more powerful than the computer that was in this room and fits in the palm of your hand. So I feel like we're undergoing a similar revolution with blockchain. 2018, here we are. And uh, in uh, you know, seven years' time, uh, what will blockchain become? That gold cloud is meant to signify the magic that blockchain is going to be, whatever that is going to be. Uh, but it is going to be magical because uh, blockchain, for me, represents uh, one of the most unique innovations uh, in a generation, uh, pretty much since the uh, beginning of the internet. So this is not a picture that you f frequently find in a presentation on blockchain, but uh, there's a reason why it's here. These are some uh, basket weavers in Kenya, and uh, they're obviously really good at making baskets. Uh, you probably maybe even want one of those. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I put uh, these basket uh, makers on the slide is because I believe that blockchain really can solve a fundamental problem uh, for uh, these two nice ladies. So there's a lot of projects on blockchain that talk about the unbanked and providing uh, banking access to uh, people in the world. Turns out that um, there's another population that can really benefit from blockchain. And uh, I call those people the unconnected. And about half of the world's population is actually not yet connected to the internet. And uh, we need to give them a reason to connect to the internet. Uh, it turns out that the unconnected is half and bigger than the uh, population of people who are unbanked. Uh, so it's an even more important thing to, to do. And um, why is that important? Because we need to give people access to economic opportunities. You know, those of us here who live here and are connected, get uh, access to tremendous amounts of economic opportunity because we're able to connect with other people uh, online. Uh, it's become a very convenient way for people to, to connect. Uh, but the rest of the world who are not connected really can benefit from an econ economic opportunities. And that comes with uh, this whole idea around reputation. So I'm starting to get, talk a little bit about what you know, Hub is about. And so, I believe that in order for this technology to reach the mainstream, we need to identify the use cases uh, that bring value to people around the world. And if we're successful, we will connect the unconnected and bring them into the world of economic opportunities that we currently enjoy today. And so, talked about tokens having value. Uh, we believe that uh, maybe just as important or maybe even more important that reputation uh, has value as well. Reputation is literally a currency that you can exchange for economic opportunities. Um, and that's what we want to represent on the blockchain uh, with Hub. So um, just a little bit of information about um, how this could work. Imagine a new framework around uh, trust, trust between people. Uh, and uh, allowing them to create trustworthy relationships on a blockchain. So we believe that blockchain is actually perfectly suited to this to build a better trust framework. So it starts off with being able to re uh, represent actions. And you might imagine that actions are actually mapped to uh, smart contracts that can kind of coordinate the workflow of uh, various kinds of activities. And then, um, there is a sense in which people 
are incentivized to act in a trustworthy way. And we call this uh, trust stake, uh, which is the idea that when people participate in an action, they can put some tokens uh, at stake. And um, it's sort of a bond that says, I'm going to act in a trustworthy way. And uh, I'm going to do well and um, you know, have trustworthy interactions with other people. And so from those actions, from that stake, you have uh, what we call outcomes, the results of these, in, uh, of these actions. And that actually maps to reputation. So the reputation that you have online on a blockchain is not self-asserted by you. It's actually uh, asserted by the other participants who you're working with, who in some sense are more objective than you are in terms of uh, helping you define your reputation. So this could be a framework that maps very nicely you know, from activity to stake to outcomes onto some really key concepts on the blockchain that we could really take advantage of. And because there are many, many different kinds of interactions that exist in the world, right? Whether it's, um, you know, transactions between a buyer and seller in a marketplace, um, uh, somebody hiring a consultant or somebody hiring an employee, or even somebody just, uh, you know, posting a message out there and, uh, tr you know, posting hopefully what is accurate information as opposed to what is, uh, you know, fake information. Uh, imagine there's, there's a protocol where the community of developers can add more forms of reputation data and further increase the value of the protocol and the people, you know, who use it and really represent the different kinds of um, reputation that, that uh, can exist uh, out there in the world. So that, that's essentially, you know, in a very, you know, clear nutshell, a way to get to the mainstream in terms of offering value to, you know, many, many people uh, on the planet. So if you're curious to find out more about our project, uh, we're called Hub. Uh, our website is hubtoken.org, and uh, it just so happens we have a Telegram group, just like many other projects. So there it is. Thanks very much.